Tom, we'll begin with a quotation. Then-candidate Barack Obama in July 2008, quote, It's like these guys, Republicans, take pride in being ignorant. They should go talk to some experts and actually make a difference, close quote. <laughs> well, talking to experts does make a difference. Uh, many of the great disasters of our time have been uh, committed by uh, experts. You, you may remember uh, FDR's Brain Trust, uh, which, according to later studies, uh, prolonged the Depression by several years. Uh, the uh, whiz kids in the Pentagon under McNamara, who managed to mess up the, the Vietnam War. Uh, you can run through an impressive list of things, of disasters brought about by people with very high IQs. All right. Segment one, the species of the intellectual. When you refer to intellectuals in intellectuals in society, whom do you mean? I mean people whose end products are ideas. Uh, there are other people, people with great uh, intelligence whose end products are things like the soft vaccine. Uh, there are a research scientist is not necessarily an intellectual. That's right. He, he, an engineer isn't necessarily right. an intellectual. That's right. Because the engineer is, is judged by uh, the end product, uh, which is not simply ideas. If he builds a building that collapses, it doesn't matter how brilliant his idea was, uh, he's ruined. Uh, conversely, if an intellectual who's brilliant has an, has an idea to, for rearranging society, and that ends in disaster, he pays no price at all. I see. Let me quote uh, intellectuals in society, quote, The fatal misstep of intellectuals is assuming that superior ability within a particular realm can be generalized to superior wisdom or morality overall. Chess grandmasters, musical prodigies, and others who are as remarkable within their respective specialties as intellectuals within theirs seldom make that mistake. Explain that. Why would it? Well, let's take an example. Noam Chomsky, mm -hmm. whom you write about in Intellectuals yeah. in Society, whose work in linguistics, in the first place, I can't understand it, but as best I can tell, everyone who understands exactly everyone who understands his technical work within the field within his discipline of linguistics mm -hmm. considers him one of the great figures of the 20th century mm -hmm. and his work in politics uh, uh, absurdity the same could be said of uh, Bertrand Russell and his and his uh, uh, landmark works on, on mathematics and other people in other fields uh, but they step outside their field and uh, when you step outside your level of uh, specialty sometimes that's like st stepping off a cliff and why is it that intellectuals, that is to say people whose end product is ideas, should succumb to that temptation more than, to use your example, a chess grandmaster? Because a, a chess grandmaster can be world famous for doing absolutely nothing more than winning chess tournaments and making displays, as many of them do, of playing uh, five chess games uh, simultaneously while blindfolded. Uh, so Bobby Fischer had no need to opine on the politics of the day because he was getting he, rich he, and famous and making a brilliant career for himself within his narrow profession. That's right. That's right. But intellectuals, what? They, they, well, it, they, it, la it, they languish it, it, we, in obscurity? Well, no matter well, how smart. well it, the whole question of uh, when is someone well-known or not uh, uh, came up during the visit of Jim, uh, Jim Flynn from uh, New Zealand here a few years ago. He's one of the world's authorities on IQ tests. Mm -hmm. uh, people, you know, in India know about Jim Flynn. People in England, he's going, he made a world tour. Uh, but I doubt if the people in the next block from where he lives knows who he, know, know who he is. I see. All right. Um, it is far easier to concentrate, again, I'm quoting from Intellectuals in Society, it is far easier to concentrate power than to concentrate knowledge. Yes. What bearing has that got on the influence that intellectuals have over society as a whole? Because they, they believe that since knowledge is concentrated in people like themselves, what needs to be done, is, uh, in a quote from, from uh, President Obama, is to put more power in the hands of, of the experts. So the intellectual temptation is to say, look, we already know everything. That's right. If only we also had the power. all the power, yes. everything would be just fine. Yes. And what's wrong with that view? Why isn't that a sensible view? One, they don't know everything. They don't, have, they don't know one-tenth of everything. Uh, in fact, I, I, I argue that they, they probably don't know 1% of the consequential knowledge in a society. Consequential knowledge is, a, is, a, is a, a concept that runs through this book. Explain that concept. 
knowledge whose presence or absence has consequences, serious consequences. I mean, I was once in a plane that was coming down for a landing in the Ithaca airport, uh, and suddenly the pilot gunned the motor and went up again because someone in the control tower had, told, told, had reminded him that he hadn't lowered, lowered his landing gear. Uh, so that was consequential, consequential knowledge. knowledge right? Yes, yes. <laughs> I was just delighted that that person had, had, had his eyes open and his mind on his work. So the notion here is that the kind of knowledge, the kind of consequential knowledge required to prove effective in governing a nation of, such as the United States with the biggest economy in the world, 300 million people, you can put together quite a large group of professors mm. and they're still not going to possess the knowledge that would enable them to run General Motors, for example, or to run the nation's health care system, for example. Oh, I, I, absolutely. Uh, in fact, one of, the, one of the things that has happened all around the world in the 20th century was that any, all sorts of countries have tried central planning. Now, the guys who run the central planning, they usually have advanced degrees from uh, prestigious institutions. They have mountains of statistics uh, uh, sitting there, and they have all the experts of the country at their beck and call. And yet, when you take the power out of their hands and return it to the market, then all the hundreds of millions of people who don't have any of those things usually end up with a higher rate of growth and a more rapidly uh, rapid decline in poverty. Because consequential knowledge, by its nature, tends to be diffused, widely diffused. Yes, yes. Right. 